The waiver wire can be your best friend. It can also be your enemy if you don't play the waiver wire correctly, knowing who's there, knowing who to pick up, and analyzing the tea leaves and what's happening is going to help you tremendously throughout the season, especially when big news drops, especially when injuries hit. And we had some injuries hit us this week, especially with Travis Kelsey as we're trying to see what's happening with him. Will he play? Will he not? But we know he's dealing with a knee issue that could impact him for a bit. He might be on the field tomorrow. He might not, but we're going to have to wait and see. But until then... There's a tight end on the waiver wire that you may want to look at and explore, and that's Noah Gray of the Kansas City Chiefs. But before we dig into the stats and information, you got to hit that subscribe button right now. You got to stop missing out on these deep dives on the waiver wire, the information on these players, lineup setting videos, and everything else to help you build your fantasy team and win those championships. But now, let's start digging into Noah Gray. And this all started with Travis Kelsey and the knee injury. The hyperextension of the knee. And we don't know how bad this is. How much of an impact this is. For all we know, he could be back on the field tomorrow. Or it could be out just this game. Or a couple weeks. But if he's out, then you're going to be interested in Noah Gray. Just to know who he is, at least. Just to know what he's about so you make your decisions. Because... When something like this happens, especially on an explosive offense like the Kansas City Chiefs, you're always interested in the next man up, whether it's the wide receiver, the running back, the tight end, because the offense is so potent that any jabroni can walk in this offense and score a little bit of fantasy points. It's that easy, and Noah Gray could do something here or there if given the opportunity, so at least you got to know who he is. And we're looking at his draft profile here. In 2021, he was a fifth round pick, late round option, six foot three, 240 pounds. So, really profiles as a move tight end and fell in the draft. So, the odds were really stacked against him. He's from Duke. Right now, he's just 24 years old. So, still got some run left in him. And then we look at the athletic metrics 467, 40 yard dash, pretty solid for the tight end position. Probably a little above average there at 78th percentile. And then the speed score is all right because he's not a huge tight end, 240 pounds. He's not like he's 260, 270 and running that. So in 61st percentile speed score, though, it's still better than average because average is 50th percentile. Burst score is okay. Agility score is all right. You got a decent athlete here at the tight end position. He's got a little bit of top end speed. That's an interesting indicator that he could do some things. At Duke, he broke out at age 18 in the passing production per dominator rating. And his best dominator rating was when he posted a 19.7% share of the passing offense. 8.6 yards per reception. So he can be targeted deep downfield. A little bit there, but more of a short target guy. Looking at his snaps per game last year, we got some high-end weeks where he got 50 snaps, 40 snaps, but a lot of them were around 20, 25. You barely saw him on the field last year because they got Travis Kelsey. But looking at the targets there, three, two, four, some one-target games. So he's not heavily targeted, and when he does get his moments... We do see a little bit of production. Week 10 against the Jaguars, 10 fantasy points, 7.5 the week prior against the Titans. Those are the weeks when he was getting the most snaps too. So that makes a lot of sense considering he's on the field more, getting more opportunity. More opportunity leads to more instances of getting fantasy points. 10 fantasy points in a week that he could have been a tight end one that week. He could have been or pushing for it. Could have been a high end tight end two that week because the tight end position so volatile. A lot of times, I've said this on a lot of videos, the tight end eight through 12 doesn't score much more fantasy points than the tight end 25. It's just how it is. You look at week to week, you look at the scoring, there are some weeks the tight end 10, 8, 7, whatever doesn't even score 10 fantasy points. 10 is a good total for a tight end. That's something you want to be interested in if he's getting some volume on the field. And this depth chart isn't really super stacked at wide receiver. We just got a lot of young guys that we like. So competition-wise, if he's on the field running routes, some of those targets could go his way. 
and he's a waiver wire dandy. You're not drafting him unless you're drafting underdog best ball right now. You're not drafting him. You already had your league. You got your tight ends, and you're sitting there on the waiver wire. Do you want him or do you not? Let me know in the comments below. But you need him because you're chasing a tight end for week one because you lost Kelsey or possibly longer. Or you want to shoot for upside here just in case you love the Chiefs offense. You want a piece of that, but you don't need him because you're already good at tight end, which you probably are. He's not Kelsey, so he's not going to perform like Kelsey, which is probably going to happen. There are better options on the waiver wire, which probably is true. I like a Sam Laporta. Is he drafted in your league? Because he's a breakout tight end that could happen this year. Not many rookie tight ends draft in the second round break out, but he could break that mold. He's a guy you want to look at and has more talents. There could be other guys as well, like a Gerald Everett. Really depends on what your league did with the tight end position. If you're in with a bunch of jabroni drafters who drafted two or three tight ends, then it might be a little slim. If not, you might have some guys there. And you want to pick who you like the most. If you're looking for just week one, look at the matchups. Look at the over-unders. This game against the Lions the Chiefs have on Thursday, over-under of around 53 to 40 points. High-end point-producing game should lead to the opportunity for anybody who's seeing snaps on the field. So you may be interested in Gray because of that. DFS gamers will be interested because of that because he's dirt cheap and you fill a lineup around him. So you put him in your lineup for free almost, three, four thousand dollars, I don't know. And then you stack the rest of your lineup with top tier players because he pretty much he's a free square. But you guys see if he's in line to get snaps on the field first because that may not be happening. And then also there might be another tight end on the waiver wire that you like better. Again, I'm not selling him to you. I'm just relaying the information. And then you're making your own decisions. There are reasons why you don't need them. There are reasons why you do. You're chasing Chiefs offense. You're going to want them. If you don't want to chase the Chiefs offense, you're good at tight end. You don't want them. The thing about this, though, just look at the market in your league. Look at the waiver wire. See what's available. Don't go too ham on it. Don't worry about week one too much. But week one does matter. It does matter. And he could bring in some balls. But anybody in that offense can. It goes off like fireworks, and we all know that. But he does have a little bit of talent when it comes to athleticism. If he's on the field, he's got opportunity, just like anybody else. If you're running routes, Mahomes doesn't care. He'll sling it your way. On the flip side of that, he's not Travis Kelsey. There's better tight ends out there. If Sam Laporta is available, he's in this matchup. I would rather have him, but it really depends. If you're in a league that went ham, at the tight end position, then he's probably not available. He's probably not there. But take a look at your league. See what's going on on the waiver wire. Maybe even a Gerald Everett. But he's got some competition with those wide receivers. But again, there are tight ends on the waiver wire with upside. Irv Smith on the Bengals. We want to monitor his snaps before we go all in with him. But if you have to, you have to. And there's even more tight ends like that. I'm just thinking them off the top of my dome real quick. But... Play your options, play the matchups, look for games that are high scoring, that gives more opportunities for that tight end to hit. But let me know what you think in the comments below. I want to hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. Catch you on the next video.